name is Lee Doherty, and I am the Executive Director of the Literacy Network of South Berkshire. Welcome to our show here on CTSB TV. We are really excited today to introduce you to some of our tutors who work with learners who are working towards their GED. The high school equivalency exam, whether it's the GED or the high set, there are two options. These tutors support their learners toward accomplishing this goal. And today, four of them tell about their experience with their learners, tell about why they became um, tutors uh, working with GED learners. Um, as you may know, Lit at LitNet, we provide free tutors for people who need support with ES ESOL, uh, towards working towards their citizenship path in life, um, adult basic education, which includes the GED and the high set. So if you know anybody who would uh, whose life would improve if they accomplish that goal in life, the GED, it's never too late. Um, doesn't matter if you're 19 or 45, if it's a goal you'd like to achieve, just even to feel good about yourself, uh, we are here to provide that um, support to you. So we hope you enjoy hearing from our wonderful tutor volunteers today from w about their amazing, the relationships they've formed, the joy they get out of working with learners in this capacity. And we hope uh, if you're a tutor who would like to work with learners, you contact me. Or if you are someone who wants to achieve their GED, you contact us. Um, or if you know somebody, just contact us and we can tell you more. So enjoy the show. It's never too late. Welcome to the Literacy Network of South Berkshire Presents. Today, our show features tutors who work with learners who are working towards their GED or their high set um, exam, the high school equivalency exam. And today we have four LitNet tutors who specialize in, in that kind of work. So I'm go we're gonna go around and people will introduce themselves and tell a little bit about how long they've been with LitNet and a little bit about the learner who they work with. So let's start with you, Abby. Hi, my name is Abigail Rogers McKee. I've been, I'm a board member on LitNet and I've been tutoring with LitNet, I don't know, about five years, I think something like that. Um, and I've tutored um, both for, for English, but also um, my focus lately has been on tutoring for the math high set. And right now I don't have a student, but I did have a student um, for several years and she was able to pass the test with flying colors. So, um, and it was a really enjoyable experience. Thank you. Uh, Marty. Yeah, I, my name is Marty Sennett. Um, I moved, my wife and I moved to Stockbridge about three years ago and I started working with LitNet almost immediately. Uh, first with, uh, language students, then a, a citizenship student, and most recently with uh, high school equivalency students. Uh, I also, I do everything except math, um, not my strength, <laughs> so. Oh. Great. Then we'll go to Kathy, who uh, is, math is her strength. <laughs> That's right. Uh, hi, I'm Kathy Dean. Um, I think I've been tutoring with LitNet about five years. Um, before that, I used to tutor, not tutor, I used to do reading for the blind in Lenox, but they moved. And so I ended up at LitNet. And yes, I tutor in math. Um, my background is math and computers. Um, I've had a number of students. Um, actually, the first student I had actually passed the test. I didn't think she was ready, but turns out she was. Um, I now have a, I've had a couple of other students in between and um, I now have a new student who um, is being tutored both in English and in math. So she's getting a lot of help and she's quite enjoyable to work with. Sandra. Yes, my name is Sandra <clears throat> Rosenblum. I've been with LitNet, I believe for maybe five months. Um, and I've been tutoring a, a, a woman, mostly in the reading language arts um, area um, because I just found that it was too much to do both the math and the, the language. Um, I've also found it very enjoyable. And um, she's somebody who actually was born in this country and educated here but for some reason just did not manage to graduate from high school and now has decided that she would like to take the exam. 
And I also find it very enjoyable. A wonderful story about Sandra's um, learner and Kathy, they're partnering with a learner, is that she really struggled at the beginning to show up and to be to know how to be a student. And she's really come so far with the encouragement. But I love that um, Sandra and her, her learner just read a book together. It's the first book that this woman who's 33 has ever read. And she really enjoyed it. And they're now reading a second book. So I just love that approach to, um, to working with her and helping her um, just focus on language and, and learning and curiosity. So that's been a great approach of not just hitting the books and doing the multiple choice questions focusing <laughs> on um, reading. So that's been, that's been great. So at LitNet, we offer um, uh, ESOL tutoring, the citizenship. Why, why the GED? Why is that what you love as a tutor? So um, why, do you choose, why do you choose that? I mean, I, I, I choose it because uh, it's really something that can help make the learner's life better. You know, both of my students have an objective uh, of getting, getting their high school degree so that they can go on to do something further. You know, they, they in one case, it was a technical school. And with the current student, it's uh, someplace like BCC. <clears throat> but they recognize that in order to do that, they have to get their high school degree. And they're doing it because it really will make a difference in their lives if they if they succeed succeed. Yeah, absolutely, and that's the the mission of LitNet is to transform lives. Often people just think of us as the, the ESL piece of what we do, and that is an important part of what we do. But we aim to transform lives in many ways. English is a first step for many people. The GED certainly transforms their lives. The citizenship. So that's a wonderful. It's a wonderful gift um, to be giving our learners. Um, challenges. Does anybody have a challenge that they've faced along the way in, in working with GED students? I have. <clears throat> um, my student was very reluctant initially um, to commit totally, I would say. And it, it took quite a bit of work, both with, with you, from you, Lee, and also on my side, to encourage her and to stick with her long enough so that she did become committed and excited about the learning. Um, and I, I think that, you know, what I realized was that I really had to be very patient with her, that she comes from a background where, and I don't know a lot about her background, but I assume that there have been many attempts at, at different kinds of education and work situations. And, um, you know, she really needed the time to, to become care, um, to become um, trusting mm -hmm. and to, um, to allow us to establish a relationship. And I, I believe that that came before any learning mm -hmm. could take place. So that was my challenge and Lee was very helpful in working through that also. I think my challenge that I've had, you know, with um, the, my past learner, my former learner, and, you know, also one that I had recently was um, especially I found with math. I mean, I tutored math also in college and majored in math and that kind of thing. So I'm sort of a numbers person. And I found particularly in that area, that you need to do lots of problems, lots of exercises, that just doing two problems is not enough because you're gonna be taking a time test. And so you don't have time to think about, a, mm -hmm. if you look at a problem, even though it's multiple choice, you don't have 10 minutes to look at that problem. You have to know what to do very quickly. Um, and so the challenge is when our learners, you know, have other, their lives of their own, many of them have children, jobs, and so forth, um, to get them to, you know, to devote the time and find the time to do the homework. Mm -hmm. Because with math, if you don't do the homework, each, if we meet once, or I mean, sometimes I'll meet multiple times a week with the student, um, 
it's very difficult to make progress. So they really have to devote you know, substantial time, I find, to at home alone doing the homework and doing problems over and over again so that they just know exactly what to do when they see it. Yeah, I, I would second that for sure. I think also with math, my experience has been um, so many people have had bad experiences with math where they've had, my theory is they've had teachers who don't like math. <laughs> and so as a result, you kind of have to overcome that. And um, I think having, having tutors that love math, you can transmit that to the student and make them realize that it's not this horrific thing that's kind of, uh, you know, standing in front of them like this wall that they can't get over to help them have confidence. Um, and so I think, um, especially for our student, we have a, we share a student, um, the trust that you've built, I think, is I can build on that in terms of helping her to have confidence that she can do math. I mean, a lot of it is just, you can really do this. It's not yeah. impossible. I, I agree because actually one of the biggest payoffs to me was after working with my student, the one who passed the high set, um, and part way through at the beginning, I said, do you like math? And she said, oh, I don't know, yeah. Um, and about halfway through, she said, you know, she said, math has become my favorite subject. Yes. <laughs> like, do math, then do the English part or whatever she really, and I was like, yes, you know, yes. she said, you've made me really like math. Yeah. So I thought above and beyond everything else that I felt like our connection and we really had fun together. I mean, we'd actually, you know, laugh yeah. about it. And, um, you know, that was really good. I think for both of us that, mm -hmm. it, you know, to instill that in her, for her to find that herself, that she actually enjoyed it. Yeah, I mean, it really is the psychological barrier for many people, you know, and not only for people that haven't graduated from schools. I mean, I'm sure all of you have friends who are you like, man. Yeah. <laughs> I, I yeah, find that, that's that, me. <laughs> I also find that um, that the reading and language arts is crucial to the ability to do the math portion of the high set. And for the learner that Kathy, you and I share, her reading, I believe, holds her back, her reading comprehension um, and just the experience of being able to identify what she is looking for in a, in a word problem. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. you know, they really go hand in hand and, um, so it's, I think it's great that we can focus on both and one of us focuses on one and the other focuses on the other because they go they do go hand in hand for these. Uh -huh. Yeah, I totally agree. And I, I think especially with math, it's the words, every word matters. Uh -huh. you know, there's no word in a math problem that's there for no reason. So you kind of have to learn to read differently than you would just read a book or read a, an article in a magazine. Yeah, I, I think that's true across all the disciplines. Language is foundational. And my current student is, is a, a non-native speaker. And <clears throat> we're doing as much work on vocabulary as, as anything else. We're, we're working on language arts. But it is, uh, it's, a, it's a real challenge for her, among other things. Uh, both of my students had life situations that were were challenging. The first one uh, that I worked with on social studies had a diagnosed learning disability and some pretty serious physical issues to deal with as well and hadn't been in school in 15 years. So the idea of learning how to learn again and learning how to deal with academic material is, is maybe the first challenge. And both with, uh, with that individual and with my current student, I think, as Sandra noted, establishing a level of trust, trying to introduce some fun into the process, take away some of the apprehension is all important uh, to moving forward. Mm -hmm. And I think celebrating the wins with Sandra in the <laughs> beginning, Sandra was very patient and her learner was not showing up and not showing that she was interested and Sandra almost gave up and I really had to remind this learner 
why do you want this? You, you have a wonderful person who's a teacher who's, re, who's you're not going to get a better tutor. This is your time. She's, thir- she's a 33 year old woman. I said, you want this to improve your life. And it's almost like going to the gym. Like it's hard to go to the gym, but why are you going? You're going for these reasons and keeping, you know, that, that in sight. And then she started to show up and they formed a relationship. And now Kathy's in the picture. And I was really happy the other day I was able to deliver her a brand new laptop. She was doing this all from a smartphone as well. So now Mm -hmm. A donor donated a laptop and she's the first person I gave it to because I'm so proud of the work that she's done. And it's because of her relationship with Sandra and now with Kathy and she believes in herself. And and when we think she maybe has a learning disability, certainly a learning deficit, certainly a a weak foundation, um, but we're going to work as hard as we can to, to help her achieve this. And I mean, there is the possibility that the test isn't something that, that some of our learners can achieve, but she's building confidence and she's becoming more educated and that's positive in itself. Um, so it's, it's just a wonderful thing. Tell, tell me about the test. Um, so there's the GED and the high set. Can, can one of you explain the difference between those two tests and options? I don't know like the ins and outs of both because I've only tutored I set, but I know that I went to an informational meeting at some point where they were talking about the two a few years ago that, that was sponsored by or um, that a lot of litnet tutors went to. And um, from what I could gather as far as just the math test is, and I think this has changed a little, the GED um, also had more advanced material a little bit. I think they had trigonometry and some more, you know, I'm not sure that they had calculus, but they had, you know, a little more advanced material. I think that's changed, but also the way you take the test was different that the high set, you can request to take it as a paper test, which my student did because she also had vision problems and things like that. Um, And that the GED, you, you have to really um, be very at ease with the computer and the mouse and you have to draw things with the mouse and things like that, whereas the high set is multiple choice. So you'll see it, even if you take it on the computer, it's choosing the answer. The GED, I think you have to, like on a graph, you know, actually, you know, use a mouse or whatever. So to me, the high set seemed sort of a, not necessarily easier, but just me, you know, a more um, learner friendly test. And especially I think for someone who's uh, where English may not be their first language, I think that it was just, so that's the route we went. So I don't really know, you know, the GED that well. Yeah, I, my, sorry. I was gonna say both of my students have used HiSET, but With my prior student working with social studies, we did use some material from uh, from the GED catalog uh, because they approach some topics differently. Mm -hmm. And I found it it was helpful and reinforcing to what we were working on in the high set curriculum. But I, I don't know as if I'd say one is necessarily easier than the other. Although as Abigail said, perhaps high set is a little more learner friendly. And one other thing that I did, again, that they talked about in um, this presentation was that for the English, that the essay, that for GED, it has to be based on the facts that you're given and so forth. And that high set, they actually allow you, almost encourage you to include your own experiences. And I thought, again, for someone you know, for, for the learner I was dealing with, that that would be a good thing. You can put in your opinion based on my experience. You know, this is the reason why, um, like one of the sample questions was, should the school day start later? Which a lot of school systems are thinking. So she could think back to her own experience, whether she thought it would be better to get up earlier and have school because she had to you know, help babysit children in the afternoon, that kind of thing, that you can put in. And the GED does not want that. They want it based on facts, what we were told. So again, that's a little different. Um, Some of it's just recognizing 
you know, these differences when you're studying for the test. But both tests oh, are, um, are um, seen as you've achieved it. You yeah. Mm -hmm. In Massachusetts, you, you get your, we'll call it your GED. I mean, that's what you should call it. Uh, your diploma, no matter which test you take. I think also with the um, high step, they allow some retests that they don't, and they don't allow that on the GED. You mean of sections you can reach? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it does sound more learner friendly. Yeah. Mm. I don't it's know. also done by a university, developed by a university rather than a private company. The GED yeah. is developed by a private company. Mm -hmm. I don't know the GED, <coughs> but um, I think for somebody who's unsure about of their own skills or their own ability to learn and succeed, the high test is quite um, challenging. Mm -hmm. It's not easy. And um, I keep thinking, I don't remember high school being this hard. Mm -hmm. You know, of course I was in the middle of everything. <laughs> but to, to look at it from my learner's perspective, she was not successful the first time around. And it can be over, I think, overwhelming and intimidating just to jump in and have to um, learn how to do this test. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I try to remember that. And I, like Mark, Martin said, um, we have a lot of fun and we laugh a lot. So I, I really do think that that helps. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, one one thing that neither of my students understood going in was that the passing requirements for the high set are not the same as what they remembered from high school. Uh, you know, you you need to in each section you need to achieve eight out of twenty mm -hmm. and forty five out of a hundred overall <clears throat> to to achieve the certificate. Now, with, with my social studies student, we strove to score much better than, mm -hmm. <laughs> than eight out of 20 on all of our practice tests. You know, I really wanted him to be consistently at 65 to 70 yeah. percent to allow a little cushion for the actual test. Mm -hmm. But uh, and, and that's actually where he scored when he took the final test which was, you know, well over, well over the minimum. Uh, but occasionally it's, it's useful to remind folks that, you know, they don't have to get 100%, they don't have to get 80%, they can be successful and it does no negative reflection on them, but they can be successful at a lower level. Right, I mean, I think, you know, part of what I was dealing with too was confidence and the interesting part, I mean, we would laugh because, I would have her send me, you know, so we didn't have to work on it during our sessions, send me the homework in advance. So she'd take a picture of it on her phone and send it to me. And then I would grade it and tell her. And I'd say, you got all of them correct. And she said, what, what? I can't believe it. I didn't think I could. I said, you know this, you do know this, you did really well. And each time she couldn't believe it. She'd take me back, OMG, you know, she couldn't believe it. <laughs> I said, you're really, you're doing really well. So some of this was because she thought she's not going to pass the test. I said, I think you can pass this test. And she ended up getting a 15. And, um, but part of it was the confidence. I said, mm -hmm. you know, you're going to sign up and you're going to take the test. And she's like, I don't think I'm ready. I said, you're ready. You're going to do it. You can do this. What so ideally, some folks are watching that know somebody that would like to 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 achieve their GED, their high set. What advice would you give to someone who's watching, um, who wants to embark on this? So a learner. I mean, I would say that you have to know right away that uh, in advance that you're going to have to devote a substantial amount of time. I mean. The, and you have to end consistency, at least for the math, I think is really important from week to week and doing the homework and that you can do this and you've got someone to help you to who's been through this before, you know, and, you know, we can help you, you can do it, but you have to be able to invest the time to do it, especially I think with all the tests, but the math 
to me if you aren't going to do the problems or the homework, you know, and you just don't have the time, then I think you should wait until you do, because otherwise you're going to end up getting to a certain point very, very slowly, possibly getting frustrated and then having to go back and start over again. So, but if you have that time to do it and, you know, you're willing to sort of, you know, get through to the end, we can help you do it. And, you know, you can meet the challenge. Yeah, I think that's, that's right. The, <clears throat> the commitment up front to take the time and particularly to be consistent. Mm -hmm. It's very difficult if a, if a learner skips a week or two, mm -hmm. you know, they, they lose, they, they lose a lot of ground mm -hmm. and then you have to go back and, and make it up. Uh, but if, if they're willing to do that and they're able to be patient with themselves, mm -hmm. they can succeed. Yes. You know, I'm, I'm absolutely convinced of that, mm -hmm. uh, but they need to have realistic expectations. Mm -hmm. I yeah. think the way that Lee has phrased, um, phrased it to my learner was extremely supportive. And she was going to say to her, um, if this is not the right time for any reason, we're not judging you, we're not angry at you. When you feel that you do have the time, come back and we'll start again. So as Mr. Rogers said, just do it. If you think you want to do it, just do it. And if it's not the right time or not the right combination of tutor and learner, you know, this, the, uh, the agency is, is very, very supportive and understanding of that. Yeah, I would agree with everything that was said. And I also think um, that if someone is committed, that if you've had bad experiences in a classroom, it's very different having a one-on-one -on -one tutor than it is mm -hmm. in a classroom where perhaps you're not understanding something and you're nervous about asking about it. You know, it's, it's, it's different and it's more supportive. And I think for a lot of people, it's a much better way to learn. Mm -hmm. I think this is a great, perfect ending to a wonderful conversation. We're, Litnet is so grateful to all of you, the four of you for the work that you do with our students. We have so many wonderful tutors, but this is such a wonderful um, chapter or, or um, area that we provide support in. And as I mentioned at the beginning, I really want to spread the word and help people transform their lives, their earning power, their confidence, their children's lives, you know, so that, um, so it's just, I think this has just been a wonderful conversation today. And I'm happy that we're able to get this conversation out there for people and hopefully uh, the word will get spread that we're here for people to to do this. So I thank you all for your time today and um, have a wonderful day. Thanks for thanks for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.